I am so, so sorry. Hello again, minions. Wheezy here. Today, I'm going to show you how to be a dick, kind of. But in reality, I'm going to talk about what you can do to have as much success as possible when using less than ideal loadouts in shooters. Let's go take a look. Okay, so we're going to start this video off with a nice little riot shield throwing knife streak. And the reason I'm going to start the video off with this is because this is not typical. <laughs> when using a loadout like this, going on streaks isn't really what you're going for and isn't really going to happen. So part of the reason why uh, we want to talk about using non-standard or kind of not very good loadouts um, is for a variety of reasons. You may just want to try mixing something up for fun or you may be looking to troll people or in this case uh, I had uh, a couple of Modern Warfare missions I needed to complete. One was for throwing knives and then after that it was for thermite kills and so the riot shield was the from what, I, from what I figured, the best way to force myself to get those kills without trying to, you know, use a normal uh, gun gameplay and just try and remember to use my throwing knives and thermite. This this meant that the only way I was really going to get kills was by using that equipment. So, in general, when we're looking at using a non-standard loadout, you really have to make sure that you adjust your gameplay style to suit what it is you're trying to accomplish. In this case, um, it's kind of twofold. One is that I'm trying to complete challenges by getting kills with throwing knife, and then, like I said, after that, thermite. Um, but also, I decided to pick a game mode that would support that, um, so I'm playing in Domination for a couple reasons. One is, uh, with people trying to capture points like that, it makes it more likely that I'll be able to catch people in a way that makes hitting them with equipment easier. Um, also, with a setup like this, where I'm not really going to have a great KD, um, I'm not really a efficient killing machine, playing something like Kill Confirmed or Team Deathmatch would be really not fair to my team, because I'm not going to be very effective with this. Um, and at the end, you'll see some of the scores that I pulled out uh, doing this, and you'll see that they, they were not positive. Um, but, as it turns out, because while I'm trying to get, complete these challenges, I'm, you know, also playing the objective, um, it's, you know, I do get some decent scores and end up doing well in these lobbies, at least as far as the objective is concerned. So, another thing to keep in mind, it's maybe not always about kills, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So with that kind of groundwork out of the way, let's talk about kind of maybe specific things you might do with something like this, where you're doing a melee only or a throwing equipment only challenge with a riot shield. Uh, this may be a little bit specific to Modern Warfare, I'm trying to keep it generalized, but uh, in this instance, um, you know, there are games with riot shields, and the idea is they have to be pointed at the enemy uh, in order to protect you, and you have to usually be crouched so that they'll protect your feet, otherwise that's where people can, can kill you. Um, and there are specific counters, so explosives in general are a decent one, but in Modern Warfare specifically, if someone sticks your shield with a Simtex, you will die. Um, if somebody sticks your shield with a Thermite, you will die. Uh, and I believe, depending on your health level, if someone hits you with a Molotov, you're pretty much going to die too. So, so there are counters to this, um, which brings up an interesting point. Uh, when you're dealing with loadouts that are non-standard, whether it's for trolling, like, I'm sure many of you have come up against Riot Shields in Call of Duty games before, or other games. And if you're like me, your initial response to that is that they are just relentlessly irritating. And as we just mentioned, there is a very effective counter to them. Things in games tend to have counters. But the most irritating thing about Riot Shields is that typically the most effective counter to it is something that you're not going to usually have in your loadout. Like, maybe you're uh, in Modern Warfare I typically run with frags instead of Simtex, which aren't very effective. I almost never run Thermite. Here I'm doing a challenge, so, um, you know, I've got to stick them to people essentially to get reliable kills. Um... But that's part of what makes these loadouts kind of trolly as well as effective, is it forces people to adapt to what you're doing. So if you're playing an objective game mode and riot shields show up, you know it's going to be a pain in the ass because they are just more irritating to kill. So, yes, you can change your class, you know, adapt and, and still play well against them. 
but it does force the other team to adapt. It forces them out of their comfort zone. So in that way alone, it can be effective, especially if you're in a situation maybe where a team has a big advantage on you. And, and just changing things up, a lot of times in games, it's switching to a smoke grenade that does this, where you just kind of throw a wrench into the works, and, uh, and it makes the other team adapt their play style, and that can shift the momentum of the game. So keep those things in mind um, as you're choosing kind of non-standard loadouts. But let's get back to specifically dealing with the riot shield and getting sticks here, because <clears throat> part of what you want to do is be sneaky um, in order to be able to stick it to people, because when they're moving, it's harder to get a reliable stick on them. Um, but you also have to balance that with the fact that your riot shield comes down when you throw it. So if you can find a time when the enemy's pausing or reloading or uncertain, um, that would be the best time to strike. Uh, but in addition to that, the uh, riot shield can also just be very distracting and disorienting um, for the other team. And that alone can g give you a lot more opportunities you wouldn't expect. And the way that people respond to you when you have a riot shield versus when they see you with a gun... Um, can sometimes just be really, really hilarious. So even though I was trying to complete some challenges for a mission on here, um, and this isn't a loadout I would normally choose, and uh, it's not, all things considered, as far as my playstyle is concerned, super effective for, like, getting kills and stuff like that, it can still be a lot of fun just because it's a change of pace, and, like this, people just, they line up, they're trying to figure out how to take you out, he's throwing C4, uh, if the C4 sticks to you too, it'll kill you, um, but if, if the explosives land out in front of you and you just back up and point your shield at them, um, it'll protect you. If there's a claymore, uh, you'll see that clip, I think, coming up where there's a claymore. You can literally just crouch and walk up to a claymore with a shield and it'll just shrug it off. Um, but, you know, something you got to keep in mind, you've seen in a lot of these clips, I'm getting these challenges complete, throwing knife kills and uh, thermite kills. But a lot of times I have to give up a trade for it, right? The opportunity when people especially start trying to figure out how to kill you and they focus on you, they're looking for that that window where they can find a weak spot and kill you. So sometimes you have to take whatever chance you have to get that kill towards the challenge, even though it's going to cost you your life too. So you see a lot of trades here where, okay, I give up and die. Um, maybe there was something else I could have done to survive longer. But the reality is I'm trying to complete challenges. So... So part of the reason, the main reason I want to put this video out isn't to show <laughs> expert level riot shield trolling, because um, this isn't that, but to show you that <clears throat> sometimes when you're trying to do things that aren't typical as far as like your try-hard gameplay, um, and you've got to do something that's outside of the norm, that you want to make sure that you don't just try and take whatever it is, like if I'm trying to complete thermite kills, or throwing knife kills, just throwing those as my equipment and then trying to play like I normally would play isn't going to be as effective. Yes, given enough time, you know, that can happen. I did that with Molotovs. Um, I just basically put them in my kit for a while until I finally did that. But it took forever because, you know, the, the amount of times you will get a kill with a Molotov, especially when I typically run with frags, they're just, the uses are very different, and Molotovs are not consistent as far as getting kills. So I should have done the same with Molotovs, probably, that I ended up doing with throwing knives and thermites, which is grab a riot shield and just walk around and hit people in the face with them. Um, that would have been a lot more, you know, if I was trying to focus down the challenge. If it's something you're trying to do in the background, you're not in a rush, you don't mind using that equipment for a while, by all means, just play your normal game style. But that's not, not what this video is about. This is about, okay, I've got to do something that maybe... Maybe it's something you don't even necessarily want to do. Maybe there's, like, uh, Call of Duty in general is, is like this, but especially Cold War is particularly irritating. Sometimes they put weapons or, or unlocks behind irritating challenges like this. And I've talked before, I won't get too much into it now, but I'll mention it briefly, about how these kinds of challenges can really screw up the gameplay for a while for a game. Because, especially if it's something that everyone has to complete, at the same time, like if something gets added like a new weapon and people have to complete that challenge, then until the bulk of the community gets that done, people are playing in really friggin' irritating ways for a while until that gets done. So that in itself can be a problem, but in general this is something that, you know, you might find yourself needing to do more often than you would really hope. So whether it's something you're doing for fun, to do a change of pace, or that you don't want to do and you're just trying to do it as efficiently as, pos as, efficiently as possible so that you can complete some challenge or unlock something that's been put behind a, an unlock. Um, 
again, make sure that you're adjusting your play style. This, this applies generally, but specifically when we're talking about like melee only kits or something like this where you're using a riot shield, something that's less uh, capable offensively or very much targeted at uh, completing a certain challenge, make sure you shift up your playstyle. This isn't normally how I would attack an objective in Domination, right? But with a Riot Shield, you've got a little bit, you know, a lot more defense, a lot, a lot more ability to just go and plant yourself on the flag and just dare people to come and kill you. So to go along with that real briefly, you also want to, in games where you have loadouts or kits that you can use, um, perks, etc. You want to craft them as to that as well. Um, I didn't realize until that moment right there when I picked up that extra uh, thermite out of a uh, resupply crate that I probably should have been running that as my uh, field upgrade because I didn't realize that it refilled Simtex or uh, thermites. That would have given me <laughs> extra opportunities after I get sticks, but um, that's something I would have changed about this, but for like your your perks and loadouts, use something that's that's going to complement what you're trying to accomplish. So here I was using, um, I believe it's called shrapnel, which gives me an extra piece of lethal equipment. So instead of, you know, one throwing knife or thermite, I get two, which when I'm completing challenges with that, that makes that a lot more efficient. Um, and then when, uh, I think I was, for a while, I think I was using EOD because I figured explosives were going to be the way people tried to kill me more, uh, more often, so uh, that was effective, um, although the way that they kill you is really by sticking it to you, and EOD won't protect you when they stick you with uh, a Thermite or a C4, so I think I ended up switching to something else, but the specifics for, for what you're trying to accomplish will be different. Just keep in mind that, again, the same concept as the weapons and playstyles, don't just take what you normally do and drop the challenge into it. If you want to get it done efficiently and quickly, change up your playstyle, change up your equipment, change up your loadout so that you can really focus on accomplishing what you want to do. Now, this will be different obviously from game to game. I used these like three games I had in Modern Warfare as a good example and it just made me think of, hey, this is a topic I really ought to discuss. Um, and it very much fits into the, the Wheezy's War College style of gameplay. So. Um, Hopefully this is something that you're going to get value out of more than just here's the most effective way to play Riot Shield in Modern Warfare. The idea is, more generally, how to use non-standard loadouts in FPS games and have success. So before we wrap this up, I want to roll in a couple of clips of just showing you how uh, funny and bewildering uh, the uh, encounters you have when using a riot shield can be like here a guys shooting at me and He just decides fuck it <laughs> and takes off um, I used my thermite so I don't have that but you know here I'm I'm basically Capturing the flag and daring them to stop me which can be really fun when your teammates show up and a guy's staring you down Trying to try to figure out how to kill you and then a teammate just walks up and shoots him because he doesn't even notice so um in this clip, I decided to pop dead silence and push this guy in. <laughs> he was pushing me from the other way, too, and we just basically are in this standoff where he doesn't really have a way to kill me, and other than melee, I don't really have a way to kill him. So, um, just in general, like, when you're using more fun play styles, you can uh, encounter stuff like this. He puts a trophy system down, which is smart, because if I have throwable equipment, that protects him, but I was all out. And the most effective counter for the Riot Shield Modern Warfare, if you can, is to just run and jump around and shoot over the top of it. But I saw him in that at the end there pick up my Riot Shield, and I was like, oh, you think you're going to play my game? No. So here he comes, and I just stick him immediately <laughs> with my Thermite. So these are, you know, interesting ways to play. They can be fun ways to play, sometimes necessary ways to play, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. But... Um, Again, the the point here, and hopefully what you take away from this video, is that there are different ways to define success, and even when you're obligated to, or you decide to uh, use something that's not meta, that's non-standard, you can still have success, you can still have fun, you can still play the game that you're playing to the best of its ability, and and that's why I've updated, you know, my the, the motto for the channel. Have fun, play hard. Have fun comes first because we're playing games and that, that does matter. And play hard also is important because it's not fun to lose all the time. So um, here we got some 
victories. I'll show you a couple of scoreboards here uh, on some games. Um, in this one, what, 8 and 26, 6 captures, second on the team as far as points because of the 6 captures. So you can see, again, it's not, you know, not going to be the, the ideal way to play. Um, let's look at this long range stick. Not the most effective way. If you have a coordinated team and you designate someone as the riot shield guy uh, and play around that, that could be fun and effective too. But uh, in general, you know, these these kind of loadouts are are decidedly putting yourself at a disadvantage, kind of intentionally, uh, if you will, because for whatever reason. So. Um, Ended up getting a lot of large victories. 5 and 11, that one wasn't as great. I did get 7 captures. Um, did lose some games, obviously, but with the Riot Shield especially, the pressure you can put on capturing points in Domination, we had some pretty decidable, uh, decidable some, pretty, some pretty decisive victories. Um, and, yeah, the, the, the scoreboard kind of reflects that, um, but not always necessarily here. There's some people in the background talking about 1v1 me, bro. <laughs> After the match. You know, sometimes people can really get frustrated by stuff. 10 and 28 with 9 captures, uh, 7 defends. I mean, yeah, if it's if you're doing it for trolling, sometimes it can be it can be good for that too, for the lulls. Uh, so we'll kind of wrap it up on these clips here. Um, and hopefully you got some value out of this. Hopefully it gave you some ideas of how you can play non-standard kits more effectively. Uh, if you liked this, go ahead and leave it a like. Subscribe for more stuff like this. There's going to be a lot more learning from Wheezy in Wheezy's War College, so I'll see you guys later. And check out this apology. I am so, so sorry. <laughs>